Okay, so we are starting our final unit, unit 12, which is about data analysis and regressions. Um, and you'll learn more about the word regression on tomorrow, I guess. Um, today, we're just going to focus on looking at data. Um, particularly scatter plots, correlations, dissociations, and causation, which sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's all kind of related. So a scatter plot. You may remember this from sixth or seventh grade, um, but a scatter plot is just a graph that shows a relationship, or maybe I should say a potential relationship. I'm going to put our ship between two variables by using ordered pairs. Now, what you're going to find as you're going through this lesson is that you're going to think I am not going far enough. Um, you'll see what I mean on these next two, but we are not talking about exponentials, quadratics, linears. We are not going that far. We are literally plotting points on a graph and then moving on, similar to what you might have done in sixth or seventh grade. So let's just start by just creating a scatter plot. So we're going to make a graph that shows the relationship to be the number between the number of cookies in the jar and the number of days since they were baked. So on day one, we have 24 cookies in the jar. Day two, 16. Day three, we have 10. And day four, we have seven. Okay. So if I was to go and graph these, let's see, what is my scale here? Three. Okay. So on day one, we have 24 cookies. Day two, we have 16. So that would be, let's see, this is 15. So 16 might be like right there. Day three, we have 10. Maybe right in there. And day four, we have seven. Okay. There's my scatter plot. I'm done. I guess technically I could label it if I wanted to, cookies and days, but in general, that's all you're gonna do. Check. Okay. Part two. It's the same exact thing we're just gonna practice. This is gonna show the relationship between the number of games that a team has played and their score at each game. So game one, they scored six points. Game two, they scored 21 points. Game three, they scored 46 and then 34. So again, let's plot those points. Oops, that's a little high. Oops, that's kind of high too. Okay, again, we're done. So you may be thinking, do I need to connect these with a line? And no, the answer is no, we're not going to connect them with a line. Um, if I connected them with a line, that would imply that you could have like 1.5 games. Well, you can't. You can only have one game or two games. You can't have one and a half games. Um, same with over here. We don't care about how many cookies are left after one and a half days. We're just going to look at these four points and these four points only. Okay? So think about um, really like a statistician mindset. You're just looking at hardcore data. You're not connecting the lines or anything. Okay? Um, so if you think something is linear, cool. It may not be. It may actually be quadratic, but you can't tell because you're only looking at four points. It's not always four points, but in general, you're not trying to make any sort of inference yet. Okay? So when you have these scatter plots, what you do want to look for is to see if there's a correlation or an association between the two variables. If there is, that means that there is a relationship, I'm writing our ship again, in which one variable is related in some way to the other. So we have three different types of relationships, okay? You have one that might look like that. That is what we call a positive association or a positive correlation, okay? That means in general, as one value increases, the other value increases, okay? It could also look something like this. It might be curved, right? The other type we have looks something like this, which is negative, okay? That means as one value increases, the other one actually decreases, okay? Could also look something like that, right? Or even that. In general, the points, points have to be going down. The last type of relationship that we have isn't actually a relationship at all. It's when the points are clearly so scattered about that there is no relationship. None. No relationship at all, okay? The two items are not related. So it could be, I don't know, 
I made something that's not related, like your height and your grade, okay? Most likely, your height and your grade are not related, okay? Someone who might be um, 46 inches tall could make a 100 or make a 20, right? Your height has nothing to do with your grade. Um, so let's look at these two examples and see what kind of relationship we see here. So on the left, we have a graph showing us the beach visitors. So depending on the temperature, they wanted to check and see how many visitors were at the um, beach. So for example, when the temperature was 84, we see that there was 225 visitors, right? In general, the points seem to be going up. So we would call this a positive correlation or positive association or even a positive trend. Those three words all are used a little bit interchangeably. Um, and the way we would kind of describe this is to say, as the temperature increases, okay, the number of visitors also increases. Okay, and you may be thinking, yeah, of course, right? If it's cold outside, people don't want to go to the beach. It's hot outside, people want to go to the beach. Makes sense. Okay, let's look over here at the snowboarding competition. Okay, in general, my points are going up, so I'm going to say this is a positive trend, a positive association, a positive correlation. All those words are stopped right here. Trend equals association equals correlation. They all pretty much mean the same thing, which is actually a little bit of a lie. Um, you'll find after you get out of my class, you go a little bit higher in statistics, that association and correlation are not synonymous. Uh, but for purposes of my class, we're going to treat them as pretty much the same thing because they pretty much are. Um, so in this case, as the years increase, the number of participants in this competition increase. Now, this is a perfect example of how um, we really can't tell much about the graph other than what we just said. We don't know why it's increasing. We don't know why there are more competitors in 2006 than there were in 2001. No idea why. It doesn't tell us anything about that. Um, we also can't just come up with a, an equation right now. If I connect all those points, it'd be a jagged line. It wouldn't be perfectly linear. It wouldn't be perfectly anything, right? Um, but we can tell that there is some sort of relationship. That as time went on, there were more participants. Okay, so clearly there's something there. We just don't know exactly what it is. So let's look at these um, five examples. And let's try to figure out what type of correlation or association it would be um, and why. So number five is the average temperature in a city and the number of speeding tickets. Okay, well think to yourself. Is the temperature and speeding tickets related? Do people speed more on a hot day than they do on a cold day? I don't know. Probably not. Okay? I'm going to say there is no relationship here. Now, every year I have someone who says, well, what about if it's icy outside? Yes, maybe. But it says nothing about the precipitation here, right? It could be zero degrees and have absolutely no precipitation and the ground would be just as dry. So, I would say in general, there's no relationship there. The number of people in an audience and the ticket sales. Well, if there's a lot of people in the audience, they had to sell a lot of tickets, right? This would be positive. If this is kind of hard for you, just draw a graph, okay? This is the um, ticket sales, and this is the audience. If you sell a lot of tickets, your audience is going to be really high. If you sell very few tickets, your audience is going to be really low, okay? Number seven, a runner's time and the distance to the finish line. Okay, so again, if this is the time down here, if they've been running for zero seconds, their distance, they've got a long way to go. If they've been running for 20 minutes, they probably don't have very far to go. So in general, this is negative. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, y'all try the next two. Pause this video and try the next two. Okay, number eight was positive. Your, family, or your grocery bill goes up the more people you have in your family, most likely. Um, the number of times you sharpen your pencil and the length of your pencil, that's actually negative. If you've sharpened your pencil 20 times, then your pencil is actually really short. Okay? The last thing, oh, 
this is just the same exact thing, but they just give you a graph to sketch it out. So <coughs> it was easy. The relationship between the age of a car and the amount of money that has been spent. So if the age goes down here, the money goes up here. Well, if you've just bought it, the hope is that you're spending very little money, right? But if you have a really old car, you're probably going to spend quite a bit of money to upkeep it, right? And somewhere in the middle, hopefully again, somewhere in the middle. So this would be a positive correlation, okay? The relationship between the number of minutes, and so this would probably end up looking something like this, because there's no perfect formula to tell you how much money you spend based off your car's age. But in general, those points would increase. Okay, the relationship between the number of minutes since the pie has been taken out of the oven and the temperature of the pie. So if it's still in the oven at time zero, right? This is the temp right here. This is the minutes. It's going to be real hot way up here, right? You take it out, it's been out for a minute. It's still pretty hot, but it's going down a little bit. It's going down, going down, going down. But then it's probably going to plateau, right? Because it's just going to be room temperature. But in general, this is still a negative trend. Okay? All right, here we go. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is that correlation association does not mean causation. Okay, causation is something totally different. Causation is a relationship in which one variable directly causes a change in the other. why it's called causation, because one is causing the other. So um, let's pretend there's four studies that were done, and here they are. We've, we've listed them out, one, two, three, four. And they have recorded their results on a graph. We can draw them if we want to. We want to figure out, is this a, an example of causation or just a random association that we really can't explain? So if we look at number one, it says there's a strong positive correlation. Okay, that would look something like this. Between the number of feral cats in a city, that just means wild, and the crime rate. Okay, well, there is a strong correlation. There is some sort of relationship there. But did the cats cause the crime rate? Well, probably not. Okay, no, this is not causation because the cats didn't cause the crime rate and the crime rate also didn't cause the cats, right? Those are related maybe, but they don't cause each other to happen, okay? Number two, there is a negative correlation, okay, going down between the height of a candle and the amount of time it was burning. Well, does the time cause the height to go down? Well, yes, in a way, right? Now, it's not literally time ticking by, but it's the fact that the, the, the uh, minutes that go by means that the wax is given more time to melt. So yes, those two are related in a sense that one causes the other. The time going by causes the height to go down. Um, three, there's a positive correlation between the number of minutes spent in a tanning bed and the number of cancerous moles on the skin. So again, positive relationship here, okay? Now, this one, you kind of need a little bit more information on, but in general, do we think that maybe the minute spent in a tanning bed is what caused the cancerous moles? Yes, probably, okay? Um, one might cause the other in that situation. Number four, there is a positive correlation between the index finger length and the math SAT scores. So again, there is a relationship there, but do we think that your finger length determines your math SAT score? Do we think that what that causes your math SAT score to go up? And the answer there would be no. It's crazy and a complete you know, coincidence that those are as related as they are, but one doesn't cause the other, right? There might be some other factor there that we're not considering. So the last thing that I have here, it says go back and consider some of the relationships already discussed and consider whether or not they are examples of causation or simply just associations. So if we go back a little bit, I'm not gonna do all of them, but if we just go back to this very first um, page, where we go to the beach visitors and the snowboarding competition, the thing about the snowboarding competition is time, the reason that the participants in the competition went up. Well, no, right, this is not causation because time does not just magically cause them to want to compete, right? There was some other factor there. Maybe, um, you know, some famous dude said snowboarding was cool and that's what caused it. Or maybe um, there was more snow on those years. We have no idea. But the time in and of itself is not what caused it, right? Um, this beach visitors. Um, that one I could see maybe being causation. It's a little bit up for interpretation to the reader. 
but I would say that, that one is a little bit more closely related because the temperature being hot causes you to sweat and wants, you know, makes you want to go swimming in the ocean or whatever. So that one makes a little bit more sense. Um, even this cookies and stuff like that, well, does time magically make the cookies disappear? No, it's someone eating it, right? But they are a little bit more related than, again, like the, the um, years in the snowboarding competition or something like that. Um, game and the score, right? Well, again, is it because it's the fourth game that they got 34 points? No, right? But is there something that would be said for a team practicing more um, and being together longer and working together longer that would make their score go up? Maybe, right? So I'm not even going to write them down on all of them because it's kind of hard to tell. But you just kind of want to think about what's logical. Do you think that those things are related or they're not? Um, and do you think that that relation is causal, um, where one causes the other or not? Um, so if you will now ask the sub for your homework, uh, you just have a few problems to work through. Hopefully it'll go pretty fast. And you'll be down to topic one.